Let's get right into it, motherfucker. So we just start off right off the bat by touching this dragon. Actually, go back a little bit, and there is some serious secret movement tech that you might not know about. You just hold X and square here, and he automatically charge jumps over that ledge, which is harder than it looks like to charge jump over. But it's a free strat if you're cool like uh, me. Normally you can flame charge this guy. I choose not to because actually what I do is I jump charge out of uh, this dragon. You can see right here I jump charge real quick. And that puts you in a really nice position to not have to flame charge. If you don't do the jump charge, if you rather you hold X square right there, then it is better to flame charge him because the approach angle is going to be less um, good. Definitely flame charge that guy. The flame charge jump right there is just swagging. And it's just classic. This is a certified hood uh, classic. Certified hood classic. Uh, just like I fucked your mom. Classic. That walk leg gives a lot of uh, cowards trouble. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to be a true uh, pussy, you could just go to Dry Canyon right away and go through the home world uh, that direction. But this route is not too bad. Uh, it just requires a couple wall glides. The key with this, now let's frame advance this, slow-mo. Jump off that little section right there. See how the, the floor kind of dips down a little bit after this point? You can see the next polygon on the floor is going to be severely down from where I am right now. This is the point that you want to jump off of because it's going to be the furthest forward while still being high on the ground. Um, and with this approach angle, let's look at it back a little bit. With this approach angle, you really don't have to do too much uh, like with your camera or anything. You just jump straight at it. You can see I really try to stretch that jump up over that first part of the wall. To get right parallel with this second one and then you could just start gliding it around that's what makes it easy it's really all in the ground right there and as you're looking at that as you're going up really be paying attention to the ground you jump right before that seam on the wall keep watching my cat's at the door meowing he's being a little bit of a fat ass he wants me to feed him i ain't going to do it okay maybe i'll do it after this video that little okay those green gems right there Look at that. So these green gems, they're fine. Take a moment to, you know, walk on this part if you need to, to grab them. Um, you know, it's really easy to miss that last one if you try to go too quickly. To that end, um, it would seem that it would make sense to do a charge jump off of this. But um, the thing about it is you can uh, get your charging jump um, cut off due to the angle of the slope. So it's a lot safer to just go for a full hop. Um, but you can do a charging jump off of this. It totally works. Um, it's just, it's just one out of every like few runs is gonna just get your jump eaten. And so that's why most of us choose not to do that. Bear right here so as not to trigger the thief early. And then this angle right here. Look at this. Ooh, look at that. Bring that back and watch that in slow-mo. Crank that shit in time like, ah, uh, right here. Hit this box on the left, and then that puts you in a perfect position to barely have to turn at all. And hit this bitch on the left side. There's barely a little bit of a window to hit him on the left and still make it onto the onto the ground. If you do if you do go too far left and you land in the water, not a big deal. You'll be fine. You could also opt to hit him off to the right, which is what we used to do for many years, actually. You can just keep going. See how you can just keep going straight and just do that flame charge jump off to the right. Keep in mind that flame charge jump, if done properly, skips the thief animation. But doing it off to the left is swagging, and if you take some damage there, not a big deal. Please play. Notice that I spliced this next part right here because uh, I'm trash and can't put together a single fucking segment correctly. Look at this fucking wall glide, though. Ho. Oh, dude, I'm so sick. All right, check this out. Back in slow-mo again, this wall glide, again, it's all about the approach, right? So we get really as far up to this corner as we can, get a big, thick, daddy, fat, tittied, goth girl, mama bitch on this one. Really get as far up as you can on it before getting the wall glide out, because that's what makes it easier. Uh, thankfully, this wall is very um, lenient in terms of uh, how far up against it you can push, but it's really depending on how far out when you get that... Uh, that initial jump, you really have to jump at the end of this because as you can see, it moves upwards as you move up this ledge. So really jump off the edge of this ledge to be the best that there ever was. And then you just, a nice mellow 45 degree angle against there and you can even get more height off of that if you're feeling ballsy. Another thing to point out back here is that if you fall or you flop, 
there's a point right, let me see if I can show you on the camera. There's a point right here that you can uh, land in the water and still full hop out and be able to 50-50 grind up the side of this, jump, charge, and kind of guide along the side like Tony Hawk, kiss the rail like I kissed your mom's pussy. But you have to do it from right here. If you get too much closer, like right here, it, again, the water level lowers right there actually. So you have to be a little bit further back. Anywhere I would say like kind of along this line right here is where you want to do that jump from, okay, as a backup, if you fall in the water. Little skitter jump off that, trail onto the left, go for these doubles. Not a whole lot to explain there. Charging jump that, it may seem a little awkward to charging jump that at first because you have to kind of come at it blind, as you can see coming around the corner. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, all right, I gotta crank, you gotta push up against left against the fucking wall and then you have plenty of room to do the charging glide, the charge jump. Same thing, charge jump over that. Charge jump over that. Really try to skitter in as many parts as you can here so that way you can get the best uh, movement. That cannon guy is a son of a bitch fucker, you know that? So take a look at this. First guy, not a big deal, right? But really make sure that you're angling hard left so that you can give yourself a good angle of approach here. And then with this guy, slow-mo. Beautiful. Get him. Sometimes you're not going to get him. Even me sometimes. You know, if you try to go too fast here, you're going to just totally whiff the flame. Or if you try to be too safe, you'll hit the fucking cannon instead of the guy. Both of those things happen to me. Um, just try your best and get good. That's really my only advice there. Don't try to go too fast. That's the best advice there. With those three guys, the moment you hit that third guy, you got to fade back. All right? Watch that. Slow-mo. Whoop. That's not slow-mo. Fade back right when you hit that third guy because you'll be you'll be able to stop your momentum fully when you hit that third guy And with some of these enemies in this section of the home world another jump charge right there to help really maintain the proper um, Lines in your movement uh, just watching that all again one more time At full uh, speed Boom fade back jump charge with the flame charge right there really extending the you can really optimize that little section And that's what that's a really fun section because I'm gay now check this out Boom, these two guys. Now, these guys might be in any number of different positions right here, right? So depending on how you exit the portal, um, they can be configured a bunch of different ways. Uh, so um, practically speaking, you can't always expect to be in the same spot. But if you bear, if you check out my inputs here coming out, you'll see I'm holding up right. As we turn it around, I crank it back over to the left. I go neutral and crank it back to the left. That's what I like to do. Um, obviously that's not always going to be the most consistent movement in terms of guaranteeing these guys' spots, but usually you'll be able to get these first two guys. Sometimes you'll be able to get all three, and sometimes you'll just be able to get the one cannon guy. If they're awkward for any reason, just go for the cannon guy, because you can get the two later without losing time with this cannon part right here. Which, as you'll notice, I do a secret strategy right here on the cannon, uh, that I invented. This is called the quick flame. Go back a little bit. What you have to do is do a short hop. Or a full hop, but short hop into this as you fade back. While you're fading back, as the camera pans over, normally if you don't do this hop, um, you're not able to flame early. Um, the camera, as it's as it's automatically turning the camera towards the towards the cannon, um, it locks you out of flaming. So by doing that short hop um, and starting to fade back as the camera gets into position, it allows you to flame as you're falling out of the air. And so that's the quick cannon strat right there. See, it's like a half second to a second. Okay, now the, with these shots, a couple things to be careful of right here. This first one, you know, obviously, that one's pretty straightforward. You literally just hit it head on. But with this one right here, go halfway. And then with this one, make sure you're pointing slightly to the left. See how I'm pointing slightly to the left of that box? If you don't do that, if you're pointing in the middle or slightly to the right, it'll actually, the cannon will shoot the fucking uh, spring chest back here. And you don't want that, right? That's not what we're trying to do. And so that's a huge time waster. This cannon is a huge time waster if you fuck it up. So make sure you point slightly left here every time. My cat will not shut the fuck up. He is still meowing. Can you believe him? Take a look at that fade back right there. Look at that. You can get an easy double kill on these fucking tents right here. Oh my god, they're burning to death. Completely ruined their entire speedrunning careers. These, And then boom. Hit them. And then another example of like a beautiful stop and fade back right there. Jump charge. Um, you can really um, take advantage of the momentum. Now, look at this little part. Oh, my God. And, hey, by the way, we have a return of a uh, Cursor Senpai, so shout-outs. But, anyways, this fucking part right here, you'll notice I missed that red gem right there. 
this fucking guy. But it's fine if you miss that guy because actually he um, he's not the crucial gem that's required for the strongbox to uh, stay together after you uh, deload and reload the area. The way strongbox works, uh, strongboxes work. <laughs> the way strongbox work is that uh, there's one crucial gem from each one that determines um, if the strongbox is going to respawn when you re-enter the area. So let's finish this up here real quick. Single charge coming around the bend there. You could actually, what you could do is coming around that. If you want to be real ballsy in this spot, you could go for a triple flame charge. And even if you miss one, you can grab it out of the air as you're jumping and fading back into the level. Uh, but I like to do a single charge right here and then recharge the next two. Look at that. Recharge. Beautiful. And another beautiful little fucking bitch right there. Get that on my face. All right. So when I exit the level, you'll see this gem explodes. The strong box isn't still there, but um, if you were to miss, I believe, the green gem there, or maybe one of the other ones, um, then the strong box would respawn because uh, one of those other gems would have been the crucial one, which have already been collected. So Now coming out of here is a pretty fucking sick strat coming up around here and coming up around the dragon as well. When we go up this hill right here, when we go up this hill, the first few jumps are skitter jumps, holding square and X together. But then the next few jumps, the, the slope is too steep to get up with a skitter jump. So what you have to do is alternate X to square like this. Um, that way you can full hop charge up the hill, which is faster than just normally charging. Um, there's actually, uh, and then roll with L1 to get around the side. You really want to hit uh, the dragon right about here, which requires you to fully get around him, especially coming from downhill like that. It's uh, hard to fully get around him like that, so definitely recommend the roll strat. Um, now, as for that X square, X square strat, the full hop charges, um, I saw recently uh, that Laura had a really cool strat where uh, where she just goes like, boom, 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 really quick with the analog stick or with the uh, fucking controller, and I'll show you what that looks like right over here. But basically, that's what you want to do. You want to just full hop charge up that. This also pertains to like supercharge the supercharge ramp in. Um, the Magic Crafters homeworld, or any slope that you need to climb climb up that's too steep to do a skitter jump. You want to do those full hop charges. Those quick full hop charges. And then that's pretty much it right there. Now with those three guys, these three guys are motherfuckers. And let me tell you why. Because these three guys right here, when you're coming out of this dragon, it's very similar to how they can be kind of random in terms of, uh, in terms of where they're positioned here. Now this position, they're kind of far away. Um, this isn't the worst position they could be in, but I would say this is like not great either. I would call, I would give the, this position maybe like a 7 out of 10, um, above average in terms of, uh, line. But they give me a clear line to go through. Usually what I'll like to do is flame charge the first one and then jump through the rest of them. But it's really, your movement is going to have to vary on the fly depending on the configuration that these guys are in. Also, I go around the left side of this archway right here. But some people opt to go around the right side, um, which I don't personally like. Obviously, it varies with the position that the three guys are in. But if you go around the right-hand side, it forces you to do a harder 180 when you come back around. So I like to go around the left, personally. And that way, you kind of have a smoother angle. Try not to bonk on those tents, dude. Those tents, these tents are bitches. They, you will always bonk on them. Don't do that. I've tried to do double flame, uh, like get this double spring chest, but they are so far apart. It is possible, but it's it's not really worth it, especially considering the angle of approach. Just short hop flame those sons of bitches. And then as you get onto the uh, little bridge right here, uh, the dock, <laughs> make sure that you land facing uh, the homie Gosnold right in front of him. Um, if you land too far, like if you land uh, like over here, he won't see you if you land like over here he won't see you even if you land like right here but you're not fully like facing in towards him he won't see you so make sure that you're really like at least 45 degrees towards him somewhere in like this area right here and that's it that's pretty much it for the peacekeepers homeworld um it's a this is one of the easier homeworlds i will say overall so this was just a quick tutorial on that but um yeah i wish you guys luck in your fucking spyro adventures and uh, keep fucking and sucking dick for a living. And uh, you guys are the best. And I'll catch you guys in Magic Crafters. Boom. Damn. We are getting through these tutorials, man. Ah. Let's fucking go, baby. Come on.